Although people may love it or hate it, networking is undoubtedly an important tool in your arsenal to help you gain valuable and practical information, and maybe even land you a job. Now, more so than ever, networking has become critical as the number of face-to-face -face opportunities have dramatically been reduced due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In this episode, we will showcase why public health and global health professionals should use networking to learn from others in the field and advance their career goals. This is the Public Health Insight Podcast. Hello, everyone. No, why do I say that? I don't like that. That doesn't sound natural. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the Public Health Insight Podcast. My name is LaShawn, and I'll be your host for this episode, along with fellow co-hosts, Linda and Gordon. Before we move on, it is important to note that the views expressed in this podcast are our own and do not represent any of the organizations we work for or are affiliated with. So to start off, let's quickly talk about what networking means to us. So Gordon, Linda, let's quickly talk about what you think networking is. Well, networking is my least favorite aspect of being a professional. Um, I don't like it. I don't do it well. Um, and so I'm looking forward to this conversation. So maybe my perspective can change a little bit. Fantastic. That's very interesting. <laughs> Gordon, Gordon, what about you? No, that's a good point. Like I think it, and we'll get into it in a bit, right? I think the point is when you, it's like, I think that the, the word on the street is for networking, you want it to be relational and not transactional. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people feel it's a bit transactional yes. and I have to ask yes. someone yes. to get something. So they kind of, it's a little hesitancy there, but um, what next? Yes, inauthentic, right? So it's like you have to, you're doing it because you need to do it rather than want. Um, and I think that kind of um, is a barrier for a lot of people doing it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's literally a tool that I would use to extract information that I would need and at the same time providing some value to that person that I'm talking to as well. So that's there's some sort of mutual exchange of knowledge and both of us can leave that conversation um, knowing more than we did before our interaction. Yeah, and I think it comes down to, and I, if, if, we're, if I'm reflecting and being honest anyway, um, I, in the last year, I've networked more than I've probably networked in my entire life. And it's probably because of Public Health Insight, right? We have a podcast. We like talking to amazing people. So my goal is to talk to amazing people so networking, um, to do it properly and effectively, you have to have a goal. Uh, and now that we have a goal, it's easier for me to, you know, mm. have a specific ask when I um, talk to someone. And the value that we give is that we connect you with other people in our network from you um, coming and having a conversation with us. So I think um, part of the reason I'm probably better at it now is because there's actually a goal in mind when I'm going to speak to someone. So, so that's actually... A really great point that you brought up because I think a lot of people may be listening to this and they'll be like, wait a minute, I already have a job. Why should I network? So what would you have to say in that instance? Is it still useful to network? I would say great question. I don't know. Um, you know, my first thoughts would be to learn about other opportunities that are in the field related to what you're working in or even something that you may want to work towards, like a future career goal for yourself. But if I'm being 100% honest and transparent, my first thought of that is, I have a job, why am I exerting this extra energy to talk to new people when I already have a job? Very interesting point. So that kind of brings me back to the last episode um, when we were talking about job searching and we were talking about how it's okay to land these shorter term contracts. But in the meantime, it's important to kind of um, be proactive and kind of seek out different opportunities and talk to other people to learn more about what's out there. So it might be rare at this stage if you're um, a student or early career professional just because of the nature of the job market to land that permanent type position. So even though you may have like a more of a contract position, you might want to start looking ahead to some of the potential opportunities that you might be interested in pursuing. And even I guess in your if you do have a, a role that you are enjoying and you know there's someone with an expertise that could really um, improve the work you're doing, maybe it couldn't hurt to reach out to that person and say, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm working in this field. I've noticed that you've been doing this for a long time. Um, I have questions surrounding this. Would you mind having a conversation? 
I don't mm-hmm. know if that's something that is common, but. And I want to go back to something you said. You said you, if you have a job, why spend effort meeting <laughs> new people? <laughs> um, but there's a misconception that networking is meeting new people, right? So there's oh. something in networking. There's networking. There's something networking called um, warm calls versus cold calls. Cold calls are people who you've never met, who may not know about your work, who you would have to do a more in-depth introduction if you were to reach out to them. Uh, warm calls is someone that you might have had a connection with five years ago, who is familiar with you, but you're just reconnecting because maybe you notice they're in health policy now and you like health policy and then there's value to reconnect with that person but it's not so much of a barrier because they know your name uh you know their name and just like hey uh last time we spoke you were in this and uh, it's really excited that you health policy would love to talk to you about how you're finding it um so i think there's a misconception too that it has to be something someone completely new um networking is also keeping tabs on the people who you're you know you're interested in their work seeing how they're career evolves over time just learning hey you you made a shift from occupational health to this why did you do that um that's networking as well networking is just staying informed with what people are doing really um and then kind of through a relationship a genuine yeah. relationship hopefully so i mean and i think this is just a mind shift then for me when mm-hmm. i think of mm-hmm. the term networking because gordon i really like how you emphasize building that relationship so i think whenever i hear the word networking i think oh no it's like at a conference how many people can you give your business card to and i'm like <laughs> never don't don't want to be part right. of that but if mm-hmm. i think of you know the warm calls versus the cold ones um maybe i can shift that and this might be helpful for others networking is more like investing in your professional relationships absolutely instead of just randomly throwing business cards and hoping someone will pick it up and call you back wait a minute linda are you telling me you didn't use those thousand business cards <laughs> i still have the yeah, whole yeah, box yeah, they got a little bit of themselves there <laughs> also so, why would we get a whole box of business cards that say we're mph candidates when i want to yeah. use it when i'm Yeah. yeah, they yeah, wanted to hype it up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a lot. There's like was it like two two different columns of business yeah. cards. They made me feel legit. half of it half of it should have been candidate and half of it should have yeah. been once you graduated. That would have been nice. You can let them know. <laughs> mm, yeah. Or should have like it should have been maybe uh present after we graduated potentially. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, okay, so we're talking about networking, we're talking about warm calls, cold calls. What is the end goal? What are the possible end goals of networking? Like what can people expect and what should they expect and what's <laughs> what's a reasonable expectation versus some sort of um unrealistic expectation that people may have? Like I guess an unrealistic expectation just to point it out there would be I'm getting a job after this conversation. Yeah, unrealistic is definitely like I'm going to call someone and then say, "Hi, I'm looking for a job. Give me a job." And then you walk away signing a contract. Very unrealistic. Right. Um, I think the expe- or I don't know if this is an expectation, but what you how you should approach networking is you should approach it as and we'll get it. I know we have a specific thing for this, but just approach it as this person has va- value, you know, obviously maybe I like their posts on LinkedIn or Um, I'm familiar with them doing news interviews or whatever the case might be. Um, you should also look if you, you look at what value you can offer the person as well, mm. right? Don't it's a that by definition uh, networking uh, leads to a mutually beneficial relationship. So even if someone is 20 years ahead of you in a career, uh, maybe there's something you can offer. Um, that they can benefit from. So you always you always have to do your research to see okay, this person started a new website. Uh, I'm not a website designer, but I'm really good at that stuff. Maybe I could say, "Hey, notice your website looks really good. I, you know, in my spare time I do this and I love your work or whatever." And just like, "Oh, hey, you mind doing something on my website?" Um that might not happen that often, but you have to kind of uh, often we get those generic kind of you know personalized message i came across your profile and it was just super convenient for me to add you uh that doesn't really get someone hype about connecting with you um uh, but when you kind of point out something that indicates that you did your research and then you kind of offer yourself as well i think those are the best uh ways to make a connection 
But I wonder too, though, because I like that point of what you can offer. I never had、mm. thought of it that way.、Um, but I wonder if it doesn't have to necessarily be I'm going to give you something if you give me something, because then for me that、mm. feels the transactional.、Mm. So how do we make it less of? Do you always have to offer a service? You know. So I, I wouldn't necessarily think so.、Um, and I struggled a lot with this early on in my career. It's like I want to be talking to these、um, people who are、um, at more advanced stages of their career, but why? Why would they、um, reply to my messages? And so to kind of combat that, I don't even know if this is like some human psychology stuff, but it's just like I think people like when you talk about their work and you、um, mm. you show that you're interested in it. So、yeah. if I'm approaching a lab. You know, read their paper, understand it, think of something that、um, interests you, and bring that towards that conversation, and be like,、yeah. "I was interested in how you did X, Y, Z.、Um, this is a very fundamental paper in the field. I'm a foundational paper in the field.、Um, I was curious about X, Y, Z." And I think that you can、um, have a very genuine conversation around that because you're. You're passionate about what you're talking about, and you're not just trying to think about, okay, how do I make this person like me or something like that. But、right. it's it kind of builds that mutual bridge and understanding. So that's kind of I think that's like some value that's really not spoken too much about. It's not necessarily you have to give them anything, but it's、right. just showing that you're connected in that mutual、it's, interest. You're just not wasting their time. Like you're、yeah. you're, you're reaching、You've、out based on a genuine interest,、yeah. right? And it's just like I'm flattered and. The value you have offered me is insight on my own work. Maybe you gave me a different perspective. I didn't know my work was being used in workplaces for mental health. I thought just you know public health people used it, right? So I think that is an insight that you've offered、uh, in that conversation.、Um, so it's just I I think what we're getting at is there's this kind of asymmetry where you have someone who's a very experienced not. Some cases, some cases, a person you're networking might be very far along in their career, and then you're kind of just starting, and there's that big asymmetry there, and then you're like, man, how do I、um, make myself feel important enough for them to respond to a message? And that's what you would do. I've, I admire your work. This is why.、Um, I would love to talk to you about X, Y about it. Like you got to be very specific on.、Mm-hmm. So、uh, you like my work, cool. Thank you. That's great. But why do you want to talk to me?、Yeah. I would like to dig a little bit deeper in this because this.、Yeah. And I、and、think you just have to be very specific. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, and I think something to keep in mind too, when you mentioned that asymmetry, it can feel、mm-hmm. a little daunting, and I think that maybe is a barrier that holds me back. But what's helpful for me to remember is that people generally. In general, people want to help other people, so I think that sometimes it can feel like, oh, this person is like, you know, twenty years in this field, they're so busy, but they want to help. People enjoy. Maybe this is human psychology too, but people enjoy sharing their knowledge with others. Networking is great in general. It's typically when you think of networking, people think of it for business value, right? You're working on a business venture, and it's good to meet other. Like-minded people to come on that adventure, but for public health specifically, we always talk about you know multidisciplinary breaking down silos. And if you're working on a project,、um, public health a lot of times is problem solving, right? So、um, you're working in your silo,、um, someone else is working in their silo, and what they're working on can be a solution to your problem, and vice versa. So staying connected. Sharing information, knowledge translation, exchange,、um, networking does help to facilitate that.、Um, you have a lot of pu- public health researchers. What better way to exchange knowledge than through networking?、Um, whether they're directly in your area of study or you know different type of、um, area of focus, but it's always a great idea to network. That's an amazing point because I was going to say the same thing. So that's that is such a important point because.、Mm. When you're an MPH, when you're learning about all this thing, these things, you're talking about breaking down silos, right? You expect one day to land a job where you're able to facilitate these discussions with different community partners, NGOs, and public health organizations, but you don't have one of the most important things: the people to connect to. To have these mutually beneficial conversations and collaborations, so you could get all the way up to that position. 
but are you only going to re rely on the organizational collaborations that are already there? Or are you looking to create more new ones that are outside the box? Mm -hmm. To do that, you must understand how important networking is. And even if you have connections that you talk to, like Gordon said, three, four, five years ago that are warm connections or warm calls, you can dig deep and collaborate with them. That It's building your resource, building your network, building your understanding. And that's how you tackle these um, wicked problems in public health and use systems thinking. These are the tools that you could bring forth with you as you progress through your career. Well, Sean, it sounds like you're saying even while you are in your workplace, while you have a job, even as you're moving up in your job, you will always be networking. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. And just, and I didn't even think of that before. Networking is a part of your job. Yeah. Like you're paid, like for me, health promoter, um, if we're trying to tackle, uh, you know, certain issues in the community, develop, you know, mental health strategies for the community, you need to talk to people from the hospital, community services, social services, housing. Um, you you got to talk to people, food banks. You know, so it's networking. Um, networking allows you to find solutions to your problem as well, because you might not have, have all the answers and then you can get connected to people with the answers. So networking is important as an extracurricular activity uh, for, you know, to focus on your career goals outside of the job that you currently have. And networking is also useful in your job in of itself. So one of the things I wanted to do, and it's uh, feeding off of Linda's comment uh, right at the beginning of this episode, let's talk about some of these barriers. What are these barriers that prevents Linda from wanting to network? <laughs> if I were to, um, and I've had a lot of conversations with many colleagues, students, um, and you know professionals, and what's a common kind of pattern, a reoccurring pattern that I see is that people are very much afraid of not um, of rejection or not being responded back to and they find this such a as such a huge barrier which is understandable because you're putting in all this effort to contact someone whether it's through email or other means and then you don't get that result that you want which is kind of a, a contact back or a reply back to what you're saying and um it, it's just a very um it, it's tough defeated. It's tough. You feel, yeah, it feel, you feel like you're not making any progress. So that's one of the kind of common things that I hear. Yeah. And I think that the rejection piece is difficult because it, it, it's like you don't want to try again after mm. that. But specifically for me, even before we get to being rejected, let's just back up a little bit of who to even reach out to. And then mm. I get stuck there because it's like, well, my question or issue or whatever I want to approach someone about it just seems so small I'm like I could google yeah. it or like I could look up a paper myself why am I yeah. going to take up someone's time to you know meet with me to talk about something or you know send them an email when they're probably too busy like mm -hmm. they, it's probably not that important because like I'm just a little new person in my career and why would I want to take up someone's time mm -hmm. um but like I had mentioned a little bit earlier, in the rare instances where I have engaged in networking, people in general are really happy that you've reached out. They want to share. They often say, reach out again if you have other questions. Mm. So, um, yeah, but it just feels daunting at the beginning. Um, I would say that it does go back to your goal. Mm -hmm. In order to understand this, I'm going to present it as kind of two different situations. So as a student, you have a little bit more leeway to be confused about what you want to do in your future. So your kind of outreach can be less focused. I'm a master public health student or I'm a bachelor student focusing on public health. And I, I've heard that epidemiology is a cool career and I would love to kind of talk to you as someone working in my local area who I maybe I want to work at the health unit that's why I want to talk to you so those can be a little bit less focused um, when you're kind of early career mid-career it gets a little bit more tricky because you're no longer reaching out to, as a student and we know that students um, people who are being reached out to um, will tend to spend a lot of time to support students because it's something that you can identify with because you were in that position and you might have appreciated an interaction when you were a student um, someone taking time out of, out of their 
busy schedule to help you so you you tend to do the same when you are more established maybe you've left the wings of your your alma mater and you're working and then to network it's purely going to be mostly career driven at that point and less kind of it could still be exploratory but it's kind of going to be so it gets a little bit awkward now where i'm out of school and i don't really have a reason to network with you so why network and i would say when you don't have a reason don't network it, it, it's going to be forced like why do you just message someone and say hey your profile looks good i want to talk to you no so what you have to do is as in terms of your growth professional development see evaluate where you're at evaluate where you want to be and then that's your goal so if you want to get from point a to point b make a plan when i say plan you don't have to have like a book and write everything out type of plan but just okay i want to be an epidemiologist at this health unit that's your plan in the next five years then network with that in mind so talk to someone who is at the health unit might be an epidemiology might be in program evaluation health promoter doesn't have to be an epidemiologist it could be i just want to talk to anyone Mm -hmm. at the health unit who has information that's a goal so then you're networking with that purpose and then when you say that when you reach out i'm interested i just graduated i'm working here i really love the work your health unit does would love to talk to you about how your experience has been at the health unit that's it simple right Um, so that's where you can you just have to know why you want to network before you even start or it gets really awkward like my f- Gordon keeps telling me to network and I don't really have a reason yeah and I just want to just send a generic message and I don't really feel like doing it don't do it yeah at that point so, so here's my thing at least mm. so it's important I, I do agree with you need that goal but I don't think that goal has to be extravagant in any way or specific oh, in any way mm-hmm. so I think The goal, your goal can be as simple as I want to learn what else is out there in the field of public health or global health. And that's enough, right? I've had countless students and young professionals reach out to me and they just wanted to hear what kind of work I do, what's out there in global health and public health. And that was good enough. And we had a great conversation. So I think you don't have to be like super, super, super specific and niche. Right. But if your goal is to kind of have that exploratory phase still, right. that's fine. And just reach out and make your intentions clear that that's what you want to learn about and that's what you want to do. That mostly applies for students, though. I think... Mm, no, yeah. No, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> I think... So if you're someone that's concerned with how someone's going to view you, um, there's something that we're going to get to. I don't think we'll get to in this episode, but just that gap where older people who are kind of transitioning careers get stigmatized against mm. um because of you know the little bit of ageism there like um i don't people don't really want to hire older workers and i know a lot of immigrant communities suffer because of this there are more barriers for those people where um a little scrambled message i don't know what i'm doing with my life people are less likely to respond to that so i think you just have to think through more deliberately i want i was an epidemiologist in my country I want to be an epidemiologist here um, and then network with that goal in mind. So I think I would say in certain situations, LaShawn, you probably need to be more focused to get more conversions from people you reach out to. Um, As a student, I think you can be a little less clear or you have less of a clear picture of where you want to be and then you can get away with it. But I think if you're if you've if you've if you have working experience, ideally, you want to be more deliberate than when you were a student. I would say that both of you what you're saying it depends what your end goal is so mm-hmm. Gordon you're speaking of someone who is job seeking right away like they need a job mm-hmm. then yeah they're not going to be just hey and have no goal but LaShawn it sounds like you're saying if you're networking to learn more about what's out there then that's the way you're going to approach your messages it's not going to be hi I need to learn about x specific career it's let me like it's share with me more about what your day to day looks like. So I guess it depends what your goal is, Gordon, as you stated at mm-hmm. the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. And y- it would look different depending on what you're trying to get out yeah. of it. The reality is, what I find is that many of these people, um, especially starting uh, starting on in their career, and you ask them where they see themselves in like five to ten years, they say, "I don't know," and Honestly, they have I don't know. no idea. <laughs> and still, I don't know, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like understanding that and understanding people might not have that goal in mind 
um, that's where I'm coming from. But I do understand、yeah. you have to be clear when you approach people、mm-hmm. and what you want. This is a good conversation. So what we're really saying is, be clear. I think more so than the goal, be clear. I if I don't know why you reached out to me, I can't help you. So if you want to、mm. learn information, even though it's not an elaborate goal, be clear. Don't don't let me have to figure out what I need to do to help you. You、mm. tell me what you need for me to help you. So whether it's more information, whether it's about health promotion, epidemiology, that's where you got to be clear. I've gotten somewhere, some people have reached out, and it's not clear what they want or how I can、mm. help. And I can't. I'm not. I can't. I can't help you if that's the case. You just have to be clear, deliberate, deliberate and clear in what you want to get out of that interaction. Whether it's more information,、uh, connection to someone who might have job opportunities, whatever is it, just be clear and deliberate in how you reach out. And just a reminder that the people you are reaching out to, they often have a lot going on, whether it's their job, family,、um, other commitments. So.、Um, You also have to be respectful of their time, in the sense that you don't want to be sending them essays to read through your resume, cover letter. You want the message to be、go. really concise, clear. As Gordon was saying,、yeah. right? Can you edit my resume? What jobs are you applying for? And like, don't start with that. Like, let's kind of build a relationship first. So,、right. we'll get into the do's and don'ts.、Yeah. Building a relationship, like、yeah. this is another human being you're talking to, not just somebody. Who is gonna hand you a job because you asked? So,、mm-hmm. main things of like being respectful of you know, put a greeting,、mm-hmm. <laughs> like those types of、yeah. things.、Um, but what's helped me, especially if you're maybe a more of an introverted person,、um, and I just speak from my own experience, is the authenticity of、right. the interaction. And so I have to remind myself, I'm talking to another human being. So. How do you just make a connection with a person, right? Right.、Um, and so keep it relevant, obviously, to the to the goals that you're trying to reach. You know, professional really professional、um, type of conversation. But yeah, yeah, I have to remember that it's a person. One thing I would add to, and we can move on. I just get、mm. a quick caveat. Don't wait till you need something to network. Yeah. And that's where we're we're getting into. Like you know, you're gonna need. You're in MPH now, or you're in your bachelor's. Don't wait till the end of your practicum to start networking because it's gonna come off as desk. Like I need a job, and that's kind of what you want to avoid. Networking before you need something out of it is probably the ideal way to approach networking. So when you have a job and you're secured, that's the best time to network because you're not desperate for someone to give you anything. So you're just reaching out just to explore what's out there, and you don't kind of smell that desperation when you reach out to someone. Just like. I saw your post. It looks like you focus on、um, child and maternal health. Would love to talk about it sometime. And like you have not, you're not your expectation. There's nothing. You're not hoping for a job interview. You're not hoping for them to connect with anyone. You're just genuinely interested in that person based on the outward facing appearance. But yeah, that would no, be my caveat. I like that, and it brings me back to project management and agile. It's like do it. At the last responsible moment, you don't want to go beyond that because then you'll be too late. If you're on a contract job and it's like three days before you finish, you passed your last responsible moment. You probably should have done it a couple months ahead. So、right. that's a great point. You've just heard from Lashawn, Linda, and Gordon about what networking means to them, the nuances of networking in the fields of public health and global health, barriers to networking, and the overall benefits of networking before you're in need of a job. You don't want to miss out the second part of the discussion in the next episode, where they share some practical tips you can use to connect with people you're interested in learning from, and how the pandemic has closed some doors for networking while opening other ones. Thank you for listening to the Public Health Insight podcast, your go-to space for informative conversations, inspiring community action. If you enjoy our content and would like to stay up to date, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. To learn more about our community initiatives and how you can support us, visit our website at thepublichealthinsight.com. Join the PHI community and let's make public health viral.